This century-old rail yard near downtown Winnipeg spans more than 450 acres, or about two square kilometers. Known as the Winnipeg Yards, it's part of a decades-old conversation to possibly relocate rail lines throughout the city. The Winnipeg Yards currently act as a dividing line between the North End and Central neighbourhoods. Uh, for the longest time, there's always been like, oh, you're on that side of the tracks, I'm on this side. But now, a two-year-long, $200,000 feasibility study is underway to see if relocation is possible, and it has some residents talking. Josh Nipanak has an idea to bring unity to the area in urban reserve. When I envision, envision this, I see like a green space and, you know, nations in Treaty 1 coming together, setting up their teepees so that, you know, uh, anybody, the relatives out on the street are, aren't houseless. Um, you know, youth in Carrick could come here, learn about their culture, experience, you know, uh, what traditional living looks like, uh, even if they remain, you know, an off-reserve individual, uh, you know, and just ceremonies to take place right here in the open land. Nipanak grew up in the North End for a lot of his life and remembers finding few ways to access his culture while being a youth in care. It's a struggle many Indigenous people face while living in a city, and Winnipeg has the highest urban Indigenous population in Canada at over 100,000 people, according to the 2021 census, many of whom live in the North End and Central neighbourhoods. Having, you know, the sacred land here or having um, a, a land where I, I could see my own culture or where I could go and, you know, sit in a teepee, listen to an elder or attend a ceremony here, uh, would, would have been so much needed. The 160-acre and former Capyarn Barrack site in southwest Winnipeg will be home to an urban reserve in the coming years, but it is not centrally located. Nipanak sent his idea to Premier Wab Canoe for consideration. Indigenous Economic Development Minister Ian Bushy responded to Nipanak's letter. He said the idea would have significant long-term implications, but many factors need to be considered. He outlined crucial steps like conducting feasibility and environmental impact studies, engaging with the community and stakeholders, determining the associated costs, and considering zoning and land use plans. Bushy continued that the process is complex and challenging, requiring careful planning, coordination, and support from partners and all levels of government. Leah Gazan is the Member of Parliament for Winnipeg Centre, which borders on the Winnipeg Yard. She says she's open to all ideas of what could go there if the tracks are moved. I know that because of the um, uh, the contamination of the land, uh, there's a lot of questions in terms of whether it would be safe for the hut in the future. I'm not sure, uh, but certainly support any sort of ideas in terms of bridging the, the divide uh, in the city. Josh says if the rail yard isn't moved, or if something else goes there instead, the idea should still be considered elsewhere. You know, because the need is there. The need for people to have access to land-based activities where it's low barrier, in terms of, you know, like you shouldn't have to go like three, four hours out of the city to do a land-based activity. Uh, you know, for it to be like right here, for everybody to experience and enjoy. He hopes Indigenous representation and consultation will be part of the feasibility study to ensure their thoughts are heard for what happens next to this Treaty 1 land. Sav Jonesa, APTN National News, Winnipeg.